Hey you, yes you, I know how you paint, because I paint and I am not an artist, but after 10 years of trial and error, I've learned some stuff. I always wanna be improving my painting, not to be the best miniature painter, but so that I can make my toys look like how they look in my head. I have five models to paint and I wanna go step by step through my painting journey, how I used to paint in high school, how I painted after I finished my first army, all of the steps I have learned up until now. A trip down memory lane to relearn the ins and outs of painting miniatures. When you're first starting out, pretty much everybody learns how to paint the exact same way, the coloring book method. You take a look at your model, you figure out all its parts, and then you pick colors for all those parts. This little mimic is perfect to explain this style of painting. It's very straightforward. I pick out all the colors I want to use. I find it helpful to do this first, imagining what the finished menu will look like and working backwards, comparing colors and what they'll look like together. Then it's just a matter of working one by one to get each part colored in. Sometimes it takes a coat or two, or three or four or five or six, but eventually everything is a nice solid layer of color. And it's fun to watch the model come to life before your eyes. Depending on the mini, it can be really tricky to actually see all the little details. Working like this, you learn all there is to see on the model. If you finish and there's still a spot or two with no paint, well, now you know and you can fill in those naked spots. No matter the mini, the coloring book method will work. It's not a particularly fast way to paint, but it is really simple. And I think that simplicity lets some little things like special effects really shine. Without needing any more painting skills, you can take a mini to the next level. I took some gloss paint and painted over his gaping mouth and tongue, and then I took some Uhu glue and let it dry halfway and then shoved it into his mouth poking and prodded it all over with a toothpick until it was a spider web of sticky saliva. Just look at that grin. And just like that, after one more minute of work, the model is a lot more eye-catching. Blood, slime, weathering powders. There's a lot of really simple things you can do to make your models pop without needing to level up your painting. But what if you do want to level up your painting? Here's another little mini, a tipsy demoness that has been coloring booked with base coats just like the Mimic. And to level this model up, it's all about washes. I applied orange washes to the body, brown washes to the hair and clothing, green and brown washes to her liquor bottles, and black wash all over the base. Washes have developed a nickname in the miniature hobbyverse, Liquid Talent, and that name is not hyperbole. It's because they provide some shading, value, and outlining all in one big wet easy to apply coat. Now you can call it done there, but if you want to take things a step further, you enter my favorite thing in all of painting, highlighting. Highlighting is taking a color that exists on the model and making it lighter. This is where things start to get really spicy, and by spicy, I mean painterly and realistic. I went back to the original colors I base coated the demon with and mixed in a little bit of white paint, and then a little more, and then a lot more to make steps of lighter colors. Then I applied those to the tops of details, making smaller and smaller marks. This adds more information to the model than was already there. Her cheeks and muscles become more prominent, the folds of her clothing catch the light, and the flat gray floor becomes a reflective stone floor. This takes a lot more practice than coloring book style because you have to make decisions about what spots should and shouldn't be highlighted. But as you practice and learn, it all becomes intuitive. It's amazing the difference a little bit of highlighting will make. And it makes you wonder, the more you do that, the more you learn where those highlights should go. Maybe you should do the highlights first. This elf magician will be a lovely model to demonstrate on. I started with a black primer, then a zenithal prime. A zenithal prime is a white coat of paint sprayed from directly above to simulate the sun when it is at its zenith. When doing a zeni prime, don't be afraid to leave some spots black. Those are where the natural shadows would be and you don't want to fill those in. After this, the model already looked pretty good, but that's not the highlights I was talking about. I loaded up some white paint onto my brush and painted on where I think the brightest spots should be. Working in only black and white makes things much simpler. It's one question, what spot should be dark and what spot should be light? It also forces you to examine the model and memorize its details, which comes in handy later. And speaking of details, I bet you're wondering where did all these amazing miniatures come from? Well, The Art of Genre is launching a Kickstarter campaign for a D&D 5th edition compatible campaign book and over 100 STL miniatures, based on the heroes, monsters, and traps from the video game Legend of Keepers, a roguelike strategy game by Goblin Studios. What sets this campaign apart is the blending of the Dungeon Defender video game mechanics and classic D&D tropes. Your players can take the role of dungeon exploring heroes, or play from the perspective of the monsters, defending their homes from those pesky adventurers, creating a truly unique RPG experience. This campaign features an incredible amount of heroes and monsters, all rendered as epic printable miniatures sculpted by the legendary Lazy Squire Games. You will receive access to minis such as Brock Skullcracker, Hannah Cartwright, and Lustwort the Unclean, and monsters such as the classic vampire, a spooky mermaid, or the enormous enchantress. Legends of Keepers Super Campaign is designed for customization and replayability at its heart. Mark your calendars, this campaign will launch on February 21st, 2023. Backers will get a beautifully illustrated 350 page campaign book and access to over 100 miniatures. Keep your eyes on that page, there will be a special surprise for all you EOB fans out there. Then it's time for colors. You don't want to cover up the black and white. You can thin down regular acrylic paints until they're see-through, 
But another way I like to do is working with paint that is already transparent, like Games Workshop Contrast Paint, Arm Painter Speed Paint, Washes, and Artist Inks. These flow on nicely, and instead of doing many, many coats of paint to make a spot uniformly one color, I push and pull that one coat of paint, making sure it pools in the dark areas and is thinner where my white highlights are. That's why I love this style of painting so much. I get to do my favorite part first, the highlighting, and even the base coating is a little bit better, because instead of layer after layer to get good coverage, I'm pushing and pulling the paint around to take advantage of my undercoat. And as icing on the cake, I get to highlight again. I can see under all my layers of paint the original black and white highlights, and this becomes my guide, painting over these spots to make sure the colors and values are perfect. I call these highlights the final highlights, because these are the last brush strokes on the model. This is the same as the Demon S with the washes, except that my previous steps pushed the lights and darks a lot further than base coats and washes could. Now in painting this model, I mixed my colors with white paint, which desaturated my colors, but that's not a problem because I can apply more transparent paint right over everything. This might seem a little scary, but the paint is really thin and see-through, and it'll just add more saturated color and not cover up anything. A little green on the base with the airbrush, a little magenta ink on the skin with a brush, and then picking out the eyes. And this elf is done, and she looks lovely. This style of painting is so great because I'm constantly throughout making those fun artistic decisions. She's very top lit because I did a classic Zenithal Prime, but you don't have to do it that way. When I look at this tiefling warlock, I see two very prominent details. The fire spells in her hands. I started the same way as the elf, black priming everything. I like a black prime because it makes everything on the model completely dark, and now all I have to do is add light. I also broke from the norm and did a Zenithal of dark blue. This will make sure that the final product is cold. Then I sprayed all the magic stuff on her, the skulls and flames with white, letting it overspray onto other parts of the model. The light that is illuminating this model is not the sun from above, but the magic in her hands. I began highlighting with a brush, loading up with white paint, picking out any details that I thought the airbrush didn't give enough attention to. Also, the white through the airbrush is not as bright as my acrylic paint, so I need to go over the brightest spots again. Then came the colors. Transparent colors right on top of all my undercoating. Another important thing to think about is things can be more than one color for a base coat. On the clothing, I mixed purple and blue. This made her long flowing skirt look more interesting with the dress flowing from blue to purple. And after my base colors were applied, I started my final highlights before the whole model was finished. And that is because I want to do some object source lighting. And where the bright light is going to spill, it needs to land on top of fully finished highlighted details. And speaking of detail, do you like to game on boards with lots of details? Well, then the Eons of Battle Patreon is for you. We make brand new terrain sets every month. This month, our patrons get the Goblin Rave Cave, a psychedelic cavern perfect for games like 40k, Kill Team, and any other tabletop war game. The skin was particularly fun to paint. I made these areas really warm in preparation for the colors to follow. After the hair and eyes, it was time to transform this mini with a little airbrushing. Neon green through the airbrush. Anything that was still unpainted got a squirt of this, and I let the paint spill right over the details that were closest to the flames and spells. It's like I'm working on two minis, just the witch and then just the spells. It's the magic's turn to be base coated, highlighted, and shaded. With greening through the airbrush, white paint highlights with the paintbrush, and then some yellow ink to alter the colors of the flames. Once you graduate from a classic Xenithal, up is light, down is dark, and you start to move those light sources around, you really start to understand reflections and color blending and texture, everything becomes a lot simpler, and all of a sudden you can move between the different styles of painting. And I think the painting gets a lot faster. And speaking of faster, this model is going to get a little bit of everything. A Xenithal Prime to start, airbrushing inks to make object source lighting on the flames of the base, layers of transparent paint to base coat, highlighting my base coat colors with a mix of white paint, coloring book base coats for the trim and the clothing, highlighting the flames in preparation for more inks, coloring book base coats on the big playing cards, inks on the fire, white to blend, yellow to color, and a little yellow to add saturation back into every detail in the model. The more you know, the more intuitive these steps become, and the faster it'll be to make these decisions, and the models will get painted faster because you're using the right tool for the right job. The more you paint, the more you'll learn, and you'll have all of these painting steps in your back pocket. There's one more thing to do to improve. Paint more minis. Yes, the more you paint, the better you get. And it's not just about numbers. It's important to paint lots of different things in a lot of different styles. Return to coloring book style. Try zenithaling from underneath instead of above. Put green transparent ink right over your finished work just to see what happens. The more you try, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the better you get. These D&D minis are not my usual thing, but I have a shelf full of 40k kill teams to paint, and the lessons I learned here will do wonders to improve those guys and anything else I paint.